Finally, I've prepared the best, simplest, and most practical workflow for OpenPose Control Net in the Flux AI that allows you to even use the main 23GB version of Flux with greater speed in this workflow and produce excellent outputs. Even with your personal LoRa, you can create images of yourself in any pose you like with both the high speed and outstanding quality of the original Flux dev model. Let's get started from scratch and set it up with ease. To begin, all you need is to have Comfy UI installed on your system. If you are unfamiliar with it and this is the first time you are hearing the name, go to my channel and watch the video where I fully explain how to install and run Comfy UI locally on your system, then come back and continue watching this video. Once you've opened the Comfy UI and entered the interface, we are going to create this OpenPose workflow from scratch. This is very interesting workflow, so listen carefully and follow each step I explain. Otherwise, you might run into errors. Be sure to perform all the details exactly as I mentioned to avoid any installation issues or errors. When your workspace opens, click on the clear button at the right corner and then click OK to clear and empty your workflow. For this workflow, we'll need some custom nodes that are very simple to install. After we fully set up our workflow, we will need a few models which I'll guide you through one by one. Okay, now you need to hit the manager button here and go to custom node manager. In the search box, search for RG3 and you will find this custom node and you need to hit install button to install this custom node. For the next one, you need to type double E S A H and you'll find this custom node Comfy UI ESAS nodes and press install button. And because I've already installed these custom nodes, you can see the install button here. But you need to hit the install button. For the next one, you need to search ControlNet AUX Auxiliary Preprocessors, this node, and hit install button for this custom node. And after installation, click close and here click update all in order to update the Comfy UI and other things that Comfy UI needs to be updated. Now you need to restart Comfy UI by clicking this button, just like that. And after that, it will automatically opens the Comfy UI interface. Now we start to create our workflow. Double click on the screen and search for load diffusion model. Again, double click on the screen and search for dual clip loader or text encoders, double click and search for VAE, load VAE, again double click, search for power LoRa loader and put it here. If you found the video helpful so far, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Creating videos like this takes a lot of time and effort and your likes and shares really motivate me to keep making more high quality detailed tutorials. For the next one, search for clip text encode for our positive text and another one for our negative prompt and right click here and choose red color for that. Again, double click on the screen and search for Flux Guidance, this one, and here search for Set Union Controller Type, this one, and put it here. Again, double click and search for Load Control Net Model and put it here. And next one is AIO AUX Preprocessor. And for the next one, search for Preview Image. And again, double click on the screen and search for apply control net and put it here. For the next one, search for random noise and put it here. For the next one, we search for basic guider. Next one, K sampler select. This one, K sampler select. For the next one, basic scheduler. And for the next one, we choose empty latent image, which we will use for final dimension of our image. Next one, sampler custom advanced and put it here. For the next one, VAE decode. And next one, save image for saving our final output and image comparer RG3 for comparing the input image 
and the final image just like this and for our load image we need a load image node all nodes for our workflow we need to connect them together for our model we need to connect output model to any input models for other nodes just like that and i connect this to this and for clip text and also connect the model to power loader loader input model next for dual clip loader connect clip to lora loader and for output of lora loader clip we need to connect this to this and this to this very easy for vae we need to connect output to input vae and connect this to this and for positive prompt we need to connect conditioning to flux guidance node conditioning input and for the negative prompt we just connect conditioning to negative here and right click on that and just collapse it because we won't use it for our workflow and connect the conditioning output for flux guidance to apply control net node input positive just like that for load control net model we connect this to this and this to this just like that oh i forgot that because we have lora here we need to connect output model of the power lora loader to the other input models for other nodes and i fix it here i connect this model to this input and this input just like that for the image we connect image to this node and connect this output to this input it will show us the open pose map and we need to transfer open pose map to apply control net just like that okay for the positive and negative output we just connect this to this just like that and guider to guider and random noise to noise sampler to sampler very easy setup for our workflow and sigmas to sigmas and latent to load an image and here our output will transfer to samples and output image will go here and image be here and for comparison we need to connect load image to image a and now everything is ready and we need to download our needed models for our workflow which i am about to completely explain to you these models need to be downloaded and placed in the proper folder the first model we need is the main flux model which i've linked in the description for you to use at the end of the video i explain that if your system is too weak to handle this model you can use the ggf models i'll show you a small change in this workflow that allows you to use ggf models but my recommendation is to use this main model and even with the method i explain in this video you can work with the main flux model at eight steps achieving very high speed and generating images in as little as 15 seconds this model has a higher quality and you can work with it even on low spec systems since it only requires eight steps you won't need to set aside a minimum of 20 steps sparing your system from a long processing time however if your system is very low spec and even eight step or too much then it's better to watch this video and install the goof models as i'll explain at the end how to use those models as well but for now just follow these steps we are going to open the link for flux dev which i've shared in the description and click on this option to download flux very easy you also need to download the vae model which is named ae.safe tensors so both of these models need to be downloaded once the downloads are complete we we'll place the main flux model in the appropriate location go to the main folder of comfy ui then the models folder and unit folder and place flux here now where does the vae model go we'll place it in the vae folder which is also inside the models folder and paste it here it's as simple for the text encoders we'll also access the link with updated text encoders compared to clip l we'll replace clip l with these open the link and here you can choose the option you like i select this one because it has a reasonable size 323 megabytes just download it and once done place it in the models folder and in the clip subfolder 
For the second Cliptex encoder, go to the another link, which I put in the description, and download the Cliptex model that I'm using, which is F16. It has better interpretive capabilities. If your system is weaker, you can also use one of these two options instead and place one of them here. After downloading F16, place it in the same folder where you added the previous one. The final model we need is available at this link. Go to the files and versions section and download Controlnet Union Pro. I'll click this option and start download. After it downloads, it'll have a strange name that makes it hard to identify. So here's what you do. Copy this text here and rename the file with this. Then put the file in this folder, the main comfy UI folder, models folder and Controlnet folder. We have downloaded all the models we needed. Now we'll place each model one by one here. I click the refresh button to load all the models. In the load diffusion models node, I select the main flux model. For the weight type option, if you have a powerful system, meaning you have over 16 gigabytes of VRAM, you can use the default option. However, the default is a heavy choice and I don't recommend it for regular systems. If your system has 12 gigabytes or less, it's better to use this option. In this video, I fully explained what each weight type setting means. And at the end, I detailed which of these four settings is suitable for each type of system and how they impact the speed and quality of your images. For the first clip loader, I select this option. And for the second one, this option. If your system is weaker, you can use this one. For the third option, I select flux. For LoRa, I enable Flux Turbo 8 step here. If you're wondering what LoRa is, I explained in this video how to use Flux at 8 steps. I won't go over it again here. Watch that video and use Flux 8 steps to significantly increase your speed without any noticeable loss in quality. It's tailored to produce images comparable to the main Flux model. You can even use your own personalized LoRa here. As I explained in the video how to create LoRa models of your own face to generate high accuracy images of yourself. Now in the set union control net type selection node, I set it to open pose because I want to use this character's pose. It will generate a new image in this pose or any other you choose, such as the meditation pose with the prompts I provide. In the load control net model type, I select the 6 GB model I downloaded, which is Flux 1 Control Net Union Pro. For the AIO AUX preprocessor, I choose OpenPose preprocessor, which you can search here. Just type OpenPose and you will see it appear. Now I upload an image in this section. I'll take this image from here and drop it in. I checked its dimensions and see it's a square 762 by 762. You can select the closest default size here, which is 768. And we will see a preview of our image showing the pose map for the character, indicating the pose it will use. We set this section to random and the number of steps to 8, since we have activated the LoRa 8 steps for Flux model. If the LoRa weren't active, it would need at least 20 steps. For the latent image size, since this image is a square, we can also set a square dimensions like 1024 by 1024. But you can use any dimensions you like and it's not necessary to match the size of the original image and the final image. Now, the next important step is to write a suitable prompt. For example, you might write something like a woman named your trigger word, P-R-S-T-O-U, is meditating on the roof of a tower. Her face is facing the camera and the city is a cyberpunk style and the overall lighting is nighttime. You must also include the specific trigger word for the custom LoRa. I'll set the LoRa strength to 0.95. Now I click Q-Prompt again and wait for it to generate the image. Remember, the first time you run it, it might take a bit longer to load all the models one by one. So be patient. When it reaches the sampler custom advanced stage, the green bar you see, click cancel once and then click Q-Prompt again. This trick speeds up the generation process for the first image. Otherwise, it takes eight to nine minutes 
or even longer for the first generation. So I'll cancel it and then hit the Q prompt again. The image it generated is quite impressive, matching the settings I applied in Node Apply Control Net. These settings give you a full control over the final output. Here we have three key points for this node. One, strength. This defines how strictly the control net applies the pose to the final image. If you set it to one, the maximum, it will lock the pose exactly. Lowering this allows for slight deviations, like minor shifts in arms, head or leg positions. Setting it around 0.64 works well for some flexibility, but if exact pose replication is critical, keep it above 0.8, though not beyond that. Step range. These two options let you decide during which step of image generation the pose is applied. The start percent should be set to zero, meaning it applies the pose right from the very beginning step, which is essential for retaining the intended pose in the final output. If it starts from any step other than zero, the initial image structure might form in an unintended position. The end person defines until which step control net uses the pose. For instance, if we set it to 50%, four steps in an 8 step process, control net will consider the pose for the first half, building the core structure and then allow more creative flexibility in the latter half. This balance ensures that while the key pose elements are intact, the AI can still add artistic variation in the final touches. By configuring these parameters, you will have control over both the adherence to the pose and creative flexibility in the final output. In the remaining four steps, creativity is somewhat limited, so let's set it at 50%. This way, during the next four steps, Flux can increase its creativity, yielding a higher quality output. You can adjust this further, but note that increasing it too much might reduce Flux creativity. In some situations, you may need the pose to be perfectly maintained until the end, so keeping it higher can help. Generally, though, it's best to keep both the first and third option between 0.3 and 0.8. My recommendation is 0.64 for the first setting and 0.5 for the third, which have given great results overall. Look at the fantastic result we achieved here. If you notice slight issues with the hands, you can lower the percent and strength values because this gives flux more flexibility, which can help prevent deformations in areas like hands. Lastly, for lower performance systems struggling even with flux, Turbo 8 step, consider using GGUF models. I've explained this in detail in another video. Watch that video for instructions on installing GGUF models. Once installed, open this workflow and double click on the screen and search for GGUF loader and select this node and put one of the models you have downloaded. Double click on the screen and load dual clip loader for GGUF models and select this one for the first option and for the second one, select one of the GGUF text encoders. Now connect clip to Power LoRa loader and link the model to the Power LoRa loader input. Remove the other two nodes and also deactivate the ADSF Flux Turbo LoRa because we're using the GGUF models for now. And that's it. You can now generate images in any pose you want. In the next video, I show you a trick to use ControlNet open pose for generating images with two characters allowing precise control over each character's face. Don't miss it. Subscribe to the channel to catch that video. See you in the next videos.